Throughout prehistory, there are common niches and ecosystems that form over and over again by new groups of animals. Over time, when one group goes extinct, another will often fill their place. Because dinosaurs occupied the Earth for such an incredibly long time, over the tens of millions of years they existed, when one non-avian dinosaur species went extinct, they were usually just replaced by a different species of dinosaur. When more ancient herbivorous dinosaurs like Stegosaurus were roaming the Earth, one of the dinosaurs that would eventually become an incredibly dominant group was around the size of a rabbit, and was bipedal, running on two legs. The ancestor of Triceratops and other similar dinosaurs, belonging to a group of dinosaurs known as the Ceratopsians. Ceratopsia means horned face in Greek. However, this name is actually a bit of a misnomer, because although members of the group that are really well known to the public, like Triceratops and other very large species that appeared later, were famously horned, there were many species that didn't have horns. And in fact, scientists are actually unsure if the dinosaur the group was named after was even a Ceratopsian. The Ceratopsians are named after a dinosaur that was known from some fragmentary horns and skull material discovered over a century ago. It was named Ceratops, and when other, more complete relatives of other horned dinosaurs like Triceratops were discovered, they were all grouped together. However, later, certain features of the original Ceratops dinosaur were very unusual, and no other members of the group share, which has led some to believe it might actually be a different, unrelated dinosaur. However, the other Ceratopsians are still named after it. The earliest Ceratopsian known in the fossil record was called Yin Long, which means hidden dragon and it lived in what would become Western China in the Jurassic period around 160 million years ago. Yin Long was very different from the other famous Ceratopsians. It didn't have any horns, was about the size of a spaniel, and it ran on two legs. But it was a Ceratopsian. All dinosaurs evolved from two-legged ancestors, including giant sauropods, and in a sense this is actually a defining trait of dinosaurs. All dinosaurs evolved from a group of small theropod dinosaurs that lived around 240 million years ago during the Triassic period. It's just the vast majority of herbivorous dinosaurs that ended up evolving back to walking on all fours. The Ceratopsians were what is known as Ornithischian dinosaurs that contain all the herbivorous dinosaurs that weren't sauropods. Animals like Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus, but also the duck-billed dinosaurs like Edmontosaurus. Despite its unusual appearance, Yin Long was definitely a Ceratopsian. Its skull was considerably wider and larger than most of its Ornithischian relatives, it had a very small and rudimentary frill, and it had a small rostral bone overhanging on its upper jaw that clearly identified it as a Ceratopsian. Yin Long's fossils have been discovered with gastroliths, which are pebbles that herbivorous dinosaurs intentionally digested in order to help the digestion of vegetation, meaning we know they were herbivorous. Despite the larger horned Ceratopsians being more famous, there are actually considerably more species of these small bipedal Ceratopsians than their relatives, and they were widespread throughout the Northern Hemisphere. For instance, the smallest Ceratopsian known was called Aquilops. That was known from North America and may have been no larger than a hare. Due to their lighter builds, they would have been far more vulnerable to predators than other later Ceratopsians. However, although they had large heads, most of their bodies were very similar to small predatory theropod dinosaurs, and so they were probably similarly fast and agile to avoid being eaten. There were dinosaurs like Psittacosaurus that had a skull that essentially looked like a Triceratops skull, minus the horns and frill. Psittacosaurus lived over 100 million years ago in the early Cretaceous. They were around the size of a pig, and in addition to their more robust skull, they also had a heavier build in their front limbs than older Ceratopsians although it is still thought that they were at least primarily bipedal. Psittacosaurus were incredibly common, perhaps even the most successful Ceratopsian dinosaur known, and so they are known from many fossils, some of which are very well preserved. And these very well preserved fossils show that they had a row of bristle-like structures that ran down the upper part of their tail that looked a lot like quills. Currently, it isn't known if they were feathers or if they had any relation to the feathers found on theropod dinosaurs or birds, and these structures have never been found on any of the larger Ceratopsians, despite their fossils being some of the most common dinosaur fossils known. By the mid-Cretaceous, around 90 million years ago, a new family of Ceratopsians named the Leptoceratopsids first appeared. They were closely related to the large Ceratopsians, but more primitive and usually smaller. The family was named after Leptoceratops, that was likely still capable of running on two legs, but evidence in its forelimb show that it may have primarily walked on all fours. Leptoceratopsids are the earliest Ceratopsians in the fossil record known to have frills. 
It was once thought they were the ancestors of the larger, more robust and horned ceratopsians like Triceratops, which are known as the Ceratopsids, but this is no longer thought to be the case. Due to how widespread and diverse they were, they are more likely a sister family that shared a common ancestor that had a frill. Just like the Ceratopsids, the Leptoceratopsids became very dominant during the Cretaceous period, with some of them evolving large body sizes. They survived throughout the Cretaceous going extinct at the end of the dinosaur era 66 million years ago. The reason the Ceratopsians became so dominant and successful during the early mid-Cretaceous isn't entirely understood, but it may have been that they were a lot more efficient at chewing and digesting plant matter than more ancient herbivorous dinosaurs like Stegosaurus. Generally speaking, herbivorous mammals have much more advanced methods of chewing vegetation than reptiles. Reptiles have a more primitive method of cutting or raking plants and allowing their stomach to do most of the work. And in fact, their teeth don't really make contact at all, which is known as occluding, and is important to allow for proper mastication of the food. The complexity of chewing food varied a lot among different dinosaur groups. However, study has shown that Triceratops and its relative Leptoceratops have wear on their teeth similar to that found in herbivorous mammals, meaning their teeth were making contact and they were able to properly chew plants and other vegetation. Although probably still more advanced than modern reptiles, Stegosaurus jaws don't show anything this complex. And this would make sense because the ornithopod dinosaurs, that are also known for having complex jaws, evolved during the Jurassic and then remained successful throughout the Cretaceous. During the Jurassic, the most dominant plants were very ancient plants like ferns and also cycads and conifers, but during the Cretaceous, the first flowering plants evolved, and by the mid-Cretaceous, they were incredibly widespread. However, the fact this change in plants happened around the same time as the decline of Stegosaurus could just be a coincidence, because it doesn't fit as well with the extinction or rise of other dinosaur groups at the same time. The largest and most famous of all the Ceratopsians were known as the Ceratopsids, distinguished by having giant horns. The earliest horned Ceratopsian in the fossil record was called Zunoceratops, that lived in what would become North America about 90 million years ago. It was only slightly larger than a sheep, and had many transitionary features throughout its body tying the Ceratopsids to the other more primitive Ceratopsians. Very early in their evolution, the Ceratopsids diverged into two distinct groups, the Chasmosaurs and the Centrosaurs. The Chasmosaurs contain the largest and most famous members like Triceratops and Taurosaurus, both of which would have been larger than an African elephant. The Centrosaurs were generally smaller and were characterized by usually having a large nose horn and smaller or even non-existent brow horns. However, despite being larger, it was the Chasmosaurs that were more primitive. Zunoceratops had a pair of well-developed brow horns similar to the Chasmosaurs, and the earliest Centrosaurs also had brow horns. So over time, the centrosaurs actually evolved to reduce or lose their brow horns altogether. Centrosaurs like Pachyrhinosaurus didn't even have any horns. The horns and frills of the ceratopsids may have been used in defense against predators. There are specimens of ceratopsian frill that have teeth marks on them, and the frill was well positioned to protect the back of their neck from attack. However, there is conclusive proof that ceratopsids dueled each other. Study of the Triceratops skull has shown that injuries are highly centered around the section of its frill just behind the horns, which is exactly where you would expect to find them if they were locking horns with a rival of the same species. To add to this, Centrosaurus ceratopsians, like Centrosaurus, that lacked large brow horns, don't have damage in this part of the frill, and instead have damage in other areas. However, since the frills developed much earlier in their evolution than their horns, it is possible that they may have had other purposes as well, like sexual selection. Zunoceratops, the first ceratopsid, was discovered in North America, and although ceratopsians have been discovered throughout most of the northern hemisphere, the ceratopsids have almost exclusively remained in North America. And in fact, further still, nearly all of their fossils are known from western North America. During the Cretaceous period, North America was divided into two or maybe even three separate landmasses, and was also much further north, so it wasn't connected to South America at this point in time. All this meant that what would become Western North America was an island known as Laramidia, and it is where the vast majority of ceratopsids lived, occupying it from the south to its arctic regions in the north. Only one species is known from outside North America, Cynoceratops, that lived in China. Ceratopsians like Triceratops and Psittacosaurus, as well as other members from the group, are some of the most abundant dinosaurs in the fossil record, known from literally hundreds of specimens, showing that they were incredibly successful herbivorous creatures but they would go extinct 66 million years ago in the KPG extinction. 
but when they went extinct, the largest herbivores in the ecosystem would never be dinosaurs again. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.